this is something that we're really loving and we're getting really good uh, feedback from our community, from you guys. Um, taking time to spend time with each of you, people that reach out. We get a ton of emails and questions each week from, from a lot of people. And we kind of filter through and take some of the best ones and say, you know what? Let's actually do a webinar and answer this so everyone can benefit from these questions rather than just one person. So we're kind of sharing the wealth and, and, and helping everybody at the same time. Um, again, got a lot of positive feedback and it's, it's kind of fun. I like making fun of Bella and uh, he likes poking, uh, poking at me. What do you so mean? what do you what mean by that? What do you mean by that? You tell me. I didn't realize you would have been making fun of me. <laughs> See, that's the beauty of it. <laughs> so um, a couple of announcements right off the bat before we get going. Um, summer, you know, winter is coming. Some of you get that reference. But uh, winter is coming, but summer is still here. You can still spend a summer sabbatical on our desk in New York. Okay. Uh, we've got guys from Russia in here. We've got guys from South America in here. We've got guys from Colorado in currently. Um, we've had guys from Kazakhstan. One of them just came by and visited us again. He was visiting uh, New York. We have people from all over that have said, you know what? Yeah, I want to come spend a week. I want to come spend a month. And I want to immerse myself in a professional trading environment surrounded by people that make their living from trading um you know there's there's only so much not that they aren't good but there's only so today, much uh, that today we would define that as getting short getting short two hundred thousand. you vixie guys expressed some of the guys did a nice job expressing their uh, short idea with puts today it was good stuff and and good expansion of their playbook uh, in multiple ways. One, trading options, a little bit easier to hold more swing positions for some intraday traders. And yep. secondly, marketplace, which is probably something we only do three or four times a month, maybe even less. There's, there's probably two, three really good trend days in a month where an intraday trader would want to move away from intraday stocks stocks in play to marketplace, meaning trading spies, perhaps trading volatility, perhaps trading IWM. Obviously a huge opportunity today. Yep. Um, so if, come be a part of that, if, if, it, if it sounds nice to sit around and see a day like today and see traders say, all right, let's shift, let's let's apply this strategy, let's use some options here. Hear them talking on the desk and exchanging ideas and get to experience that. That is some invaluable stuff that you simply cannot get from some course or for some book or whatever. You just cannot replace that type of experience. See how we prepare, see how we review, all that good stuff. Uh, Bella, you're muted. I see you're talking, but you're muted. Maybe that's better. <laughs> Maybe that's the best practice going forward. <laughs> Keep me muted. Um, interesting day today to be a part of our desk in that some of our guys got ahead of Weight Watchers a little bit on the short side. Some of our guys who did best today started down a good 15,000 bucks and uh, ended up you know, north of 30,000 north of 25,000, north of 20,000, depending on the guy. Hung in there, the market does not close at 10 o'clock or 10.15. You can get beat up a little bit when you're a better trader in some names. This is a game of risk, and so you get beat up a little bit, 10, $15,000 on an idea that perhaps you get out in front of, maybe you shouldn't have, or for as much. Hang in there, the market really starts to work for your favor, expand your playbook, express your ideas in different ways. Weight Watchers came in a little bit, but very interesting day today. You know, we had rumblings about Gary Cohen potentially resigning. It seemed as if the market surprisingly to some viewed that very negatively and that maybe this is another example that the tax cuts, the infrastructure deals, 
the continuing deregulation, the pro-business program that the administration was thinking about instituting was less likely and confidence from CEOs uh, as well with the disbanding of a couple of the CEO panels yep. in conjunction with the administration. And so interesting, interesting. Did, didn't think didn't think we would be down this much today based on the way the market has reacted over the past three years. Could see why it would be down, but um, it was different. I mean, I had a conversation with one of our top traders today, uh, really did a nice job expressing short positions and puts and walked him, was walking me through his thought process. The first demo we had did not bounce. There was, there was very little bounce, even after it came out that Gary Cohen was not gonna resign right away, was gonna at least stay on temporarily. And uh, that lack of a bounce after that first down move was the tell. Take a look at this. Take a look at this daily chart of the S and P futures here. Um, what we've seen lately, th this along the right side here is all every single tick of volume that's been traded for 2017. Okay, so it's the it, a composite type of profile of all the volume that's traded. What we've seen lately is a move up to all time highs, and then you see this volume start to build right here. So we see this volume build right here. We have this high volume node and we have this older high volume node right down here. And what we've seen recently is a break from that. We went right to this most traded price. We bounced, we went right up to this most traded price. And today was another reversion straight back down to this most traded price here. So it's interesting we see this kind of, oh, us market profile people call it, or volume profile people call it, POC ping pong, where the market is literally bouncing between two high volume nodes. So very, very methodical, very, very uh, precise type of moves we're seeing right now. Uh, one other thing I want to say is that the you have an opportunity right now, it's not something we offer all the time, to spend an hour with one of our mentors. I don't care if you're focused on options, futures, systems, obviously equities and stocks. Um, you can spend an hour, I think it's $99, smbu.com slash mentoring, um, instead of you know the usual rate, which is quite expensive for, for a lot of mentors. If you're unsure about that, if you wanna go from reading books and studying courses and whatnot to actual customized individual feedback on what you're doing, what your process is, and where what are some concrete steps you can get to improve. Spend an hour with us for 99 bucks. If you think we've wasted your time, if you don't like the session, let us know. You get your your money back. And I hope this goes to zero. There you go. <laughs> So it's just a, a really good opportunity. Um, you should make that a sad face, not a. <laughs> oh me. Anyways, if you get your money back, you should, be, you should be happy. Oh, that's true. It's a win-win. That's true. If you do end up doing some official mentoring with us, or decide to do some course or whatever, you get that ninety-nine dollars credited towards whatever you do. So it's literally risk-free. There's there's nothing to worry about there. So with those announcements. Um, Bella, please take it away. Let's let's dive into uh, to helping out Matthew here and, and letting the rest of the community learn from this uh, session as well. All right, great. Let's do it. So let me bring up um, let me bring up Matthew's question, and we'll bring him in. And Matthew, if you would read the question for us, I'll bring it up here. Sure. And we'll start there. I made some notes that we'll go over to help answer your question. So, Matthew, you are up. All Can right. You... So this is your question, right? So you reached out to us, you had a question, and we said, hey, let's talk about this as a community mm -hmm. and walk us through your question. And feel free to uh, 
expand upon any of these ideas. Okay, all right. Um, been trading for a couple of years here now, and as most people who get into trading, uh, you know, you, you, it's easy to open a chart and um, it's easy to place place an order whether you're long or short. Uh, it's just finding that that discipline uh, and into staying uh, having small size. And, uh, and when you first start out, you just don't, and you're like, oh, this is, you know, 700 shares or 800 shares or 900 shares. Or you get some buying power. It's like, oh, this is 2000 shares. And if it moves against you, you know, you know, you don't have the discipline. And I know I didn't when I first started to, you know, put that hard stop in or, you know, just let go of the position admitting that you're wrong. And, you know, over time you could try to trade like someone else and it's not, uh, it may not fit you just flat out. It just may, you know, what someone else sees may not be what you see. It doesn't mean that they're right and you're wrong or vice versa. It just means everyone has their own style. Uh, I know it worked for me. I switched from one minute charts over to the five, the 15 and the 30 and the daily. And I added some, uh, some EMAs. I added the nine, the 20, the 50 and the VWAP. Uh, for me, this gives me a little more, uh, just helps my decision-making process uh, when, when taking a trade here. Um, I started reading the tape a lot more. Uh, I started paying attention to that uh, via uh, just learning about reading the tape through the One Good Trade book. And it's a lot to take in. It's like drinking from a fire hose starting out. Uh, but once you learn to, your brain just, you know, it's, it'll slowly process the information. Like no one gets anything the first day. And after, you know, being able to process the information and then digest it in a manner that'll let you react to it in time, uh, it's really become uh, a, one of the best tools in my in my tool belt, uh, so to speak. Um, I saw that uh, what was it? I think that, that day, yeah, uh, EMLI uh, had an order. Uh, I think. For, what was it? Like, like 50, let me look here. Sorry. At $265, it had uh, a big buyer just come in. Yeah, 80, 87,000 share print on the offer. And once I saw that, I knew I wanted to pay attention to that level. Uh, now, this was in the pre market, but that's a lot of size that most retail traders, traders are not going to be able to have at their fingertips. Um, so I waited for the bell to ring, uh, the bell rang, you know, it dipped down for a minute, but it didn't go too far out of its pre-market range. Uh, and once it got back above that 265, uh, I got long. Um, I was able to, you know, make a profit off the trade. It went up, I think, all the way to 270 before it started to pull back and came to some resistance and uh, it fell back down, I think, below 260 that day at the end of the day, if, if memory serves. Um, but yeah, it's just it's going over the process, trying to remind yourself that you're not going to be, uh, I consider it, um, how do I put it? I put it, consider it almost like to boxing. You don't climb in the ring and claim you're the best ever the first day you box. It just doesn't happen. You know, you go in the gym, you learn how to jab, you learn how to stand, you learn how to move your feet. Uh, you have to learn everything, things and slowly over time, you slowly get better. And I think that's starting, what I'm starting to see in my trading uh, I'm slowly, slowly absorbing more, uh, listening to the trading group of guys that I talk to on a regular basis. Uh, and the goal is to be, you know, a consistently profitable trader uh, and then be able to trade full time. Okay, great. So, look, I thought this was a great question, particularly because when I read through it, it highlights many different issues. And what I thought I would do is just sort of walk through those issues and okay. talk about them one by one. So you brought up an interesting point, which is uh, you feel as if you uh, have had to pay the market tuition <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> to build a career. And one of our good friends uh, who uh, who I know says this a lot better than I, but uh, you know Michael Martin is a good friend of ours and a, and a really good trading educator as well. 
he uh, talks about how uh, you can get in there and not take training, open up an account, start trading live, and you're going to pay the market a, a ton of tuition. Uh, you know, or you can go get trained really well, uh, pay a, a, a training firm, an education company tuition, and then start trading. And assuming the training is 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 good, you're, you're going to pay a lot less. I really liked his book, uh, The Inner Voice of Trading. Yeah. I thought it was quite good. Short read, uh, but but packed with, with goodness. Yeah, I'm in it. I mean, just as just just as <laughs> just as long as you're going to be making fun of me, you know. If you, I mean, are you in the book? No, I don't think so. I don't think you are in the book. But go pick up the oh, book. Oh, zinger, man! The that was the good. Book. So, you know, he makes a good point, which is you're going to be paying a market tuition, and you got to decide how you want to do that. Do you want to pump your money down and? as people will recognize, I get a lot of calls where people say, I ripped up $50,000 in the marketplace. Can you help me now? I have no money left. You know, that's, that's not a, an optimal position. And so, as you said, this is a process, but you know, you're going to pay, you're, you're going to pay a market tuition, whether that's paying for training, paying for really high quality education, or whether or not that's making trades and, and losing money at the beginning. There are stages of competency in the marketplace. We talk about losing too much at the beginning, losing less, that's a huge step forward. Getting to flat, that's a place most people don't ever really get to. Just being flat is a place most people don't get to. Making a little bit of money, being consistently profitable, expanding your playbook, working on sizing, there's an evolution to this. And so you're, you're going to, you're going to struggle at the beginning. Remember at the beginning, this is the worst you're ever going to be as a trader. So it's great. You're bright. You're ambitious. This is something you want to do. You're passionate. This is the worst you're going to be as a trader. Today is the worst you're going to be as a trader. And it gets better if you apply, if you go about it the right way, it does get better. Uh, we've had guys who didn't make money for, uh, 18 months who now make over half a million dollars a year period full stop that happens nice and so lesson number one is and i thought it really came out in your in, in your email there is going to be a market tuition embrace it accept it The second issue I thought that I, I picked up from your email was this idea of trader implosion. And if I might, I'd like to go back to the first firm party that I went to in the late 90s. I was trading a, a stock actively called KTEL. And KTEL had announced that it was thinking about putting music on the internet for people to listen to. And it was the internet age and uh, it was really volatile. And I had some days when I was just starting out where I put up over $20,000. And then on this one day, I'd actually lost $18,000. And I remember my manager at the time talking to me, pulling me aside at this market party, at this firm party and saying, well, you're doing really well in terms of being able to make PL, but we've got to calm down these implosions because your, your negative days are you know, matching your positive days. And one of the things that we stress to our guys in here is that you want to get to the point as best as possible where your best days are much better than your worst days. Your best days, just to sort of give you a frame framework, ought to be twice as good as your bad days. On those bad days, you're not seeing the markets well. Today, I noticed one of our guys wasn't seeing the markets particularly well. He's not having the best month overall as well. He's a big hitter, so that can change within one trade. He could go positive in one trade this month. 
And so I don't want to step in the way of that. But also when he's not seeing the markets well on an intraday basis and on a monthly basis, we want to reach out to him and take his temperature. We want to be a little bit more careful with him because he's just, it's just not working for him right now. And so we want to get him to lose less. We don't want him to implode when he's just not seeing market toll. And that happens. I mean, even a good intraday trader might have a couple of bad months out of 12, even with the type of trading that we do, which breeds more consistency. That, that can happen. And so on those one or two months where you're not seeing markets well, you want to keep those numbers low because when you make money, you're going to get to keep more. And so think of it that way. You know, are you making twice as much on your good days as on your bad days? And if not, what can you do to lessen the impact of those bad days? And so ways to get better include getting bigger and doing more of what you do well and doing what you do poorly a little bit less. And things you can do on trader psychology to make steps forward are make those bad moments last a little bit shorter have them visit a little bit less frequently and make them burn a little bit less hot. And so one of the really great coaches that I know is Dr. Jonathan Katz. And I just had actually a really interesting conversation with him today. And he many years ago worked with one of our top traders and this top trader really frustrated me. I didn't understand why he acted against his self-interest the way that he did. I still remember the conversation about this. I was standing outside on West End Avenue and 71st Street, having this conversation with him, being really frustrated, and standing on the corner for about 45 minutes as he taught me that there wasn't anything I could do to change the trader. The trader was who that trader was. But what we could do together as coaches was to get him to understand his moments of weakness and to make those moments of weekend weakness come less often, be less destructive and not last as long. And that's all we could do. We couldn't change the fact that implosions were going to come. We couldn't change the fact that destructive behavior was going to creep in, but we could manage it a little bit better. So it reminded me a, a little bit of myself back in the late 90s and conversation I had about a really terrific trader a while ago. And so another really interesting topic of conversation that comes out in your email is forcing trades with size. So this is Shark and Zeb and Jeff, who's going to have a baby. Any, well, he's not going to have a baby. His wife's going to have a baby any day now. <laughs> And uh, I'll bring them up again. How does that work? <laughs> and uh, yeah, these are guys on, on Team Shark. And we had a meeting this week with Dr. Steenbarger and Team Shark. And we went around the room and each of them had a goal that they're working on. And they said it out loud. They say it out loud so that other people on their team know that they're working on a specific goal. They say it out loud because it provides an opportunity for Shark and for the other team members to hold these traders accountable. Accountability really works. And so one of the things that a good trading, a good training program does is it holds you accountable. Not all the conversations that we have at this firm are pleasant conversations. Not all the conversations that I have with really top performing traders are complimentary. There are tough messages that need to be delivered at times. And some people need those messages delivered in ways that uh, the volume of your voice is not as it is right now. And uh, that's part of coaching. And so being accountable is really important. And we do that here. Carlton does a good job about being accountable. And um, if you visit the firm, you will at least once a quarter here that I'm holding people accountable and setting standards. And so the thing 
that a couple of these guys are really working on is they have edge. They clearly have edge. There is unmistakable edge. In fact, one trader I'm thinking of on Shark's team, unmistakable edge. Win rate, unmistakable edge. Sharp ratio, if you want to measure trades that way, unmistakable edge. Um, efficiency, how much you make relative to how much you lose, unmistakable edge. Has a playbook, knows his playbook. He just got to trade bigger. And in fact, during the session with Dr. Steenbarger and Team Shark, I reiterated for the umpteenth time, you have unmistakable edge, trade bigger. You have to trade bigger. And he actually says to himself, I know I have edge, I have to trade bigger. And uh, he's working on that. And you know, Shark is working on this as well. And Jeff is working on this in, uh, as well. And so it's not as easy just to sort of say, I want to trade bigger. I have edge, I want to trade bigger. Because when you want to trade bigger, the most common thing that happens is that traders force trades, is that they really want to flex their muscles. And they put on that bigger size in trades that are not A plus trades. And they put on trades with size that are not quite the moment for the trade to start working. They're a little bit early. And that causes them to get wicked out or stopped out of certain positions. And because you always got to trade within guardrails. And so that is something that traders actively work on who are making really good money. So um, the good news is, is that you're not alone. The bad news is, is that when you become a consistently profitable trader, you're still going to be working on this. But one of the things that we talked about as a group, as a best practice to help with this is for every half hour to take your temperature. So some of the traders get a little bit anxious and when they're anxious, they get out in front of trades. If they take their temperature every 30 minutes, it helps them to understand what state they're in. If they're feeling anxious, they know they've got to wait a little bit. They got to wait even longer before they see the trade. Perhaps they need to go for a walk. So, you know, today I, I, I did my mindfulness training today and I had a lot of things to do today. I was on the phone a lot in the morning. I hate being on the phone. I hate being on the phone. I hate talking to people on the phone. Um, if anyone has called me, I apologize, but I just don't like being on the phone. I don't get the phone. I don't like it just, you know, send me an email. I just, I'm just not a phone guy. And I sat down to do my mindfulness activities and the market was really active and I had been doing stuff I didn't really want to do and I was so anxious. I mean, and normally I'm pretty laid back. I was, and Merritt may disagree with that, but normally I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty laid back. Yeah. And uh, I was so anxious. I mean, I actually was uncomfortable when I started those exercises. I, I, it was painful for me to actually do the breathing exercises because I wanted so badly to start getting done what I needed to get done. And I was really interested in looking at markets. Um, but I have a commitment to breathing at a certain time. So I also had that issue. And uh, you're different on, 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 on days. Each day is not the same. You're you what you're bringing to markets is different. And so and that's going to affect your trading. If, if you're really, really anxious, you're going to be more likely to get out in front of trades. If you're really, really calm, you might be more likely not to size up in opportunities that present themselves. If you're in the zone and you're doing really well, you're going to be more likely on a day like today to take a rip and, 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 and weight watchers, watch the market and really put on a good, a good trade with, with puts. And so th that's certainly part of the process. Forcing trade with size, it's patience. I call it patience, aggressiveness, patient aggressiveness. And they're different. They're, they're, they're competing, they're competing thoughts and they're competing moods, but they go together and, and you got, you got to sort of get to that point. So before that, obviously you need edge before that you obviously have to understand your A plus setups. Good exercise for that is also do a playbook trade each day after close 
of a setup that makes the most sense to you. For reference, my second book is called The Playbook. Then from those playbook trades that you've made over many, many months, develop an A plus playbook, develop an A plus playbook and start pushing your size in that A plus playbook. All right, find your niche. So another thing that came up in your email was your journey to find your niche. And this is a picture of Andrew Faldi, who teaches net zero presently. One of, uh, he is the top options trader trailing 12 months on the options desk. And so doing really well. He came to us many years ago. It might be as many as eight years ago. Took training in a completely separate product than what he trades right now, actually in systems training. And um, then took those skills and applied them to options trading. Uh, Seth Freuberg runs the SMB options desk and they run a strategy that is very different than uh, intraday trading. It tends to do better when volatility is low, although they will say they do, they do well is when volatility is high as well. Um, when volatility is too high, that won't be their best market, whereas that would be their best market for a day trader or an intraday trader. That would be that would be great for us. So it's a diversity play for our entire desk. It, we hold for longer periods of time, but um, Andrew took some time to find his mark. He started as a student. He started as a student in a different product. Applied some of those skills to another different product regular of the options tribe started playing around with the system in a different way that some of the other guys were trading thought about trading it further out in time thir thought about setups that don't require as many changes to it as many adjustments they say in the options world so you, you sort of sit in the trade for, the, for those of you who are looking for systems where you don't have to make a lot of adjustments. You just sort of put the trade on and it either works or it doesn't. This is a rigorous system, meaning it's been back tested extensively. It has rigor to it, but it also doesn't require a lot of in and out the way perhaps Merritt and I might trade. Um, and I think I trade more in and out than Merritt and Merritt trades less in and out than me. And Andrew is on the opposite spectrum where that's about as, that is about as passive a trading strategy as you ought to find. The term he often uses to describe his trading is no touch. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. Okay, great. So, but you know, the point of that is not that one system is better than another, but that he found a niche that works for him, that, yep. that works for his personality and cognitive strengths. And I think too many people think that all you got to do is go sit next to somebody who is making a lot of money and then you will be, become a really great trader. I wrote about this years ago. I called it uh, find the best teacher. You know, A, that really great trader might not be a very good teacher, which is not going to help you. Um, but B, you might not be able to trade the way that trader does, not because you're not smart enough or you don't have the skill, but because your cognitive strengths are different than that traders. They're not better or worse, they're different. And your personality strengths are not better or worse than the traders, they're different. We have guys out here who make money in lots of different ways. They're very different. And so um, I had a interview today with a particular uh, candidate for a new hire position. And I would describe that trader very distinctly in his cognitive and his personality strengths. When I talked to him for 25 minutes, it was clear to me what his strengths were. And um, you've got to sit and I in my notes said, this is the way this guy's going to have to become a good trader. He's going to have to be really creative. 
and the way that he thinks about markets, he's going to really have to back test to win in markets. Uh, he's going to have to be unique in how he attacks markets. I don't see him as somebody who is going to trade like swine. I don't see that. That's not his cognitive and personality. Those are not his cognitive personality strengths. And I think people skip over that. You, you really got to match the two up. And Seth Freudberg, you know, is a former CEO of an insurance company. He doesn't want to sit in front of screens 10 hours a day. He's more analytical. He wants rigor behind what he's doing. Other guys just kind of want to play. They want to hit the buttons and they'll figure it out, get them involved in stocks. They'll watch, they'll watch, they'll watch. They'll figure it out and find their moments. Other guys are better suited to trade that way. And so you mentioned something that lots of people talk about and is often not understood, which is a lack of discipline. And so, Matthew, how are you defining a lack of discipline? Uh, I find I find defining a lack of discipline when the, the trade moves against you and you get stopped out or or and you forget you you choose not to stop yourself out you know you may not have a hard stop in there and next thing you know you're you're trading off hopium you know praying to the stock gods that the uh the, it comes back to your to your level and breaks you out even or for a small loss but instead of that uh you'll you'll add to a loser that's always a, a fun experience said no one ever uh getting the stocks that you just had no business in uh, because someone else recommended it. Uh, it wasn't on your watch list. It, it, it was something that you just heard through one of your trading buddies or someone or said like, Hey, and it could be a trade that works for them. But you know, just from looking at it, you're like, all right, I'll get into it this one time. And you know, discipline is staying to your game plan and um, just, you know, holding to it. You can make adjustments to your plan after, you know, you're in the trade. Uh, but, you know, if you see something that doesn't uh, fit your eye, uh, but yeah, discipline is just following through what you set out to do, whether it's the stocks you picked, uh, your stop, your profit loss, uh, your profit marks, uh, all that stuff, doing what you have to do every day. All right, great. Merritt, uh, when you're working with your students, what are some, uh, what are some coaching tips? that you provide on improving discipline? How do you talk about getting better with discipline to, to some of the yep. guys you work with? Yep, all over it. So um, the, the, the prevailing natural line of thought, wow, S&Ps are even continuing to trade lower. Um, the prevailing line of thought is that I need more discipline I need to use willpower to do the right thing. I need to come in in the morning. I need to write that in my journal. You must do this. You want to will yourself into doing that. I think that that is not the best approach. I think that is more of a, an attempt at some form of a Band-Aid solution to an underlying problem. I believe that the underlying problem in most cases is a, a combination of a lack of a good enough, strong enough, honed in enough process for your decision making around stopping out, around all aspects of trade management or entry or whatever. If you're over trading and you think that's the lack of discipline, then you're not doing, you don't have a good enough process in place to lean on where you're, you're, you're this is a trade or an opportunity, or this is not a trade or not an opportunity. That's not defined well enough for you. You may think it is, but it's not. Um, another thing is, and, and we actually talked about this today, I'm, I'm shooting this market profile course. And one of the things we went through was having a very oftentimes um, people don't have a good enough framework that they apply to markets. And what I mean by that is like a higher time frame context, a way to frame a certain understanding, a certain labeling, even the, the way we do, this is the current market condition. Okay. And where does that market condition change? If we were to see some type of behavior today, what would invalidate that? 
And so approaching each day with a higher time frame context and an understanding of the way markets move. And just as Dr. Steenbarger would say, we have a framework for markets, which, which provides an overall strategy and way of framing um, risk reward and all these kind of things. And then this is where everyone wants to focus is on the tactics. They want to focus on coming in and making the trades and seeing the candlestick patterns and seeing the, the VWAP and the moving averages and the RSI and all this kind of stuff. And that's where we get blind and that's where we get focused. Next thing we know, we look up and we've made a lot of decisions based on all of these short term references that should not be the most important drivers in assessing risk reward and assessing opportunity. Okay. So I know I've just kind of like word vomited on everybody here with a bunch of stuff, but these are, these are two very, very important things when it comes to discipline. One, if you have a nice way of framing a higher time frame context and a rationale behind why this is a good short, for example, now all of a sudden, if the market violates that, you don't feel like, oh, I should hang in here. I should, or, oh, I should fight this and add to it. No, all of a sudden it's boom. This is a very different uh, market environment than I had uh, originally anticipated because I prepared for this day. Boom, this is a shift in context. I want to be out of this trade. It's not on the table for me anymore. I want to be out of this trade, not the market is my enemy and oh, dang it, I've got to get out of this trade now. I don't want to, right? Uh, that whole thing. And, one other thing, I got to lay this out there too. Probabilities based thinking, probabilities based mindset. We can never know the outcome of any individual trade in advance. We never know. We can have an edge, just like a casino has a great edge. The casino doesn't know if you're going to win or lose on the next spin of the roulette wheel. They don't know and they don't care. They know they have an edge. They're creating rules that have to be followed, AKA a process. And that's what their focus is on is keeping that process consistent so that that edge is actualized over enough period of time. Trading is the same way. We don't know if the next pullback short in a downtrend is going to work or not. We can use things to help us to help put that edge in our favor. We can understand the higher time frame context, we can learn to read the tape. We can put all of this together and be the best trader that exists. But the best traders that exist, at least in our space, most of them are still wrong half the time, right? We never know. So thinking in those terms of reducing the overall importance and expectations on being right this trade right here, right now, and taking a step back and thinking a little bit more of the bigger picture of the business that you're running and that losses are unavoidable and these type of things. Now, all of a sudden we're, we're in a much better frame of mind to not necessarily fight the market and, and, and violate our own risk management rules and things like that. So that's, that's my two cents. Okay. I like that. Okay. Right, Thanks, Mark. And so routine was another major theme in your email. Some of the things we do here, I love the idea of you focusing on your routine and making it better and stating it. You want to think as somebody who's trying to become a CPT, a consistently profitable trader, about accomplishing your process goals and not being results based, not being results based, being process based. And so part of being process based is having a really solid routine. So for example, reviewing your best trades, something we do on a daily basis, multiple times a day. This is a picture, a snapshot from our trading room, from our training room in New York City, where we're going to, we're going over best trades during a mentoring session. Routine, best practice on the desk is guys getting together and discussing trades after market hours. Dan G, what'd you see in Home Depot? 
Shane, what'd you see in Home Depot? Let's compare notes. Let's talk about it. Let's get some more practice. Let's get some more reps with trading by talking. One of our guys who uh, we were mentoring recently talks about one of the ways he's trying to get bigger is he talks with his roommate who also trades on the desk about getting bigger on a daily basis. And I said, stop right there. That's great. Like, that's not a small thing. You kind of blew through that. It's not a small thing. It's a huge thing. Being able to talk to somebody who trades bigger than you, much bigger than you about their struggles and their successes. That's a huge thing. It's a great part of a routine. Maybe doing some more back testing or modeling. We had a firm meeting this week, uh, which was a webinar. We had a webinar. One of the traders from our partners in Austin came on and talked about machine learning and showed how uh, he took a back test and made it much more proficient, improved the sharp ratio, improved its win rate, improved its scalability, uh, improved its accuracy, and shared with the firm how he used machine learning to do that. And so that's a, that's a big part of, of everything that we all need to be thinking about in today's, in today's age. Not that you have to be an automated trader, but that you might want to be more bionic. You might want to add some skills to supplement your trading and make better trade decisions. The psychological support. I noticed in, in some of your emails that you can get a little lonely perhaps uh, doing what you're doing, but I like the fact that you're leaning on other guys who are friends of yours, who are like-minded traders, being mentally healthy, treating ourselves well. We had a, a group meeting this week where we talked about self-talk, treating ourselves well, and how sometimes too many of us don't talk to ourselves after frustrating trades the way that we would talk to a teammate or a friend. We talk to ourselves like, how could you be so effing stupid, you SOB? You know, if your friend had explained to you what you did, would you talk to that trader the way that you talk to yourself? No, you, you wouldn't. And if, if you're not, if you're talking to yourself, unlike you would talk to one of your friends or one of your teammates, then you need to improve your self-talk because it's tiring. It's mentally exhausting. It's punishing to talk to yourself that way. And it's unhealthy. You know, and I love the idea that you're gathering a support system around you that's very important. We're structured as teams on our desk. And teams are not just for sharing ideas and making more money, but in sharing the psychological challenges, the ups and the downs that we all go through. You know, Swang actually is in here. I'm really proud of Swang. Uh, he took a huge hit overnight in a particular positions and kept his cool turned a, a really large loss into less during that day. And the other guys on the team get to see, well, trading's not as easy as some people make it out to be because here is the seven figure trader who just took a large rip. And what he's trying to accomplish today is to lose less. And the real struggle today is not let the unavoidable overnight rip pretty much unavoidable, avoidable, but sort of, in this case, an, an inevitable, if you trade long enough, an inevitable, unfortunate open, an inevitable rip, how you keep your cool and play the ball where it lies from that point, no matter, no matter, how, no matter how deep in the rough it is. And I noticed from your talk, the issue of trading big or too fast. So there's a great podcast on chat with traders with Andy Kirshner, one of our partners. 
who talks about trading bigger. You got to you want to trade bigger, but you got to do it the right way. You want to push yourself outside your comfort zone responsibly and with a system. We talk about 20% bigger each successful trading period. It should be it should be systematic. You can't just walk in and say, "I am going to trade as big as Andy Kirshner today." Not the way it works. That's a good way to do some damage to yourself. And you know, I'll say lastly, it's a process period, full stop. It's a process, period, full stop. I had a conversation with a trader on a desk who I'm most proud of. He developed a unique trade that nobody on our desk trades, totally has edge, I totally get it. Back tests great, I love it. Want to encourage him to trade it bigger, trading with a little bit of success. And we had a conversation with him and another mentor and you could see he was frustrated that he wasn't doing better with this trade. I mean, he had back tested this idea. Everyone was, I was telling him how great it was. I had told him in the past, he gets the idea too. He wants to expand his playbook, but he wasn't making as much money as he thought he would be making from discovery. And I said to him, what I'm gonna to say to you, which is it's a process. You've got edge in a particular trade. You're not gonna go from zero to hundred miles an hour in one month. You're going to try and get better this month at this trade. You're going to gather experience trading this setup and this trade. That's what you're going, you're going to move the ball forward. And when you have edge and you move the ball forward, the next month you're going to trade a little bit better and a little bit bigger. And the next month you're going to get a little bit better and you're going to trade it a little bit bigger. And you're going to take notes about what's working and you're going to notice the nuances in the trades and you're going to improve. And that's really... That's really the biggest reward you can expect. And so uh, we'll sort of bring you back in here, Matthew. Any questions that I can answer for you, American answer for you, uh, while we got you here? Um, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, nothing comes to mind right now, but I'm pretty sure once this ends, I'll having a list of them. <laughs> Merritt, any questions we want to answer that have come in? Uh, nope. I think we're all, we're all caught up. Uh, just one thing. Someone asked about series 57. Do we cover that in our education? No, we don't, we don't uh, cover SEC uh, or FINRA uh, exams in our education. That's uh, more for joining an arcade. Um, Correct. we're a prop firm. Um, we don't, our, our traders trade firm capital and that's not something that we go through, but I will having, I want, and in a, in a former life had to take this, the series 57. And I would say respectfully, if you have trouble passing the series 57 trading may not be the sport for you. Um, all you gotta do is study, they have books, go study. It's not a big deal. Um, I think I spent a couple of days studying and, and passed. Um, and so, all right, great. Uh, Bella, going to be recruiting at, I don't know what that means. Traders for a cause. Oh, Traders for a cause. I will be at Traders for a cause. Um, T4 ACK. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, I'll be at Traders for a cause. I'll talk a little bit more about that in September should be fun and that will be the third in a row I'm going there so looking forward to that and all right so Merritt I'll let you finish it yeah. off here uh, we got a slide here with our, our email address and whatnot um, if you have questions for Bella or myself please don't hesitate to reach out and um, don't forget about those announcements that I made at the beginning where you can come spend a week with us, come spend a month with us, surround yourself uh, with professional traders, professional environment, trade on our demo, enjoy New York while it's still warm, and uh, get a little better at trading. Um, other than that... And you get to sit in on uh, with a special video today, right? For those of, for those of you who are summer sabbatical students, you got to sit yep. in on Merritt's uh, market profile class today. Yep, yep, yep. Two days in a row, right? Three. Three days in a row. Three. 
That's great. So we have two parts to futures trading now. That's right. We got an intro course coming out with. Uh, but we're not releasing it. It's never going public. We're yeah, just keeping it right. in house. <laughs> One is not, for people that don't released. have any experience whatsoever. We'll, we'll teach you. We'll build you totally from the ground up. Uh, even some of a lot of the things that I was talking about to Matthew in terms of belief systems, um, thinking in terms of probabilities and, and cultivating the proper mindset so that now stop losses are not something that we're fighting against and all that good stuff. I cover that in, in a lot of these courses and we're going to create that framework with market profile and then continue on down the line to intraday strategies and how to trade within that framework and, and read order flow. All right, good. Tomorrow should be interesting. The market was different today. Yep. For lots of different reasons. Yep. I guess people have said that in the past before as a short, short term trader, it was different today. So we'll yep. be checking out the open tomorrow and good to see volatility pick up to see some market open up a little bit. Should be fun. Talk to you guys next week. Uh, as always, we're around to answer your questions. Hit us up on email. Trade well. We'll talk to you soon.